pedals and effects with the new, the newest, freshest, most fucked up Earthquaker devices pedal yet. Data my, corruptor. In my opinion. Data corruptor. Data corruptor, data corruptor, data corruptor. The data corruptor is Earthquaker devices PLL offering. And that is phase lock loop. Which I still don't actually understand what a phase lock loop is. And it's been explained to me many times and it's like when you're in math class in like 11th grade and they're, you're just like looking at the board and it just blanks out and then you start thinking about playing guitar or something. And you're just like, I don't, I don't even know what they're talking about. My, my first uh, introduction to what a PLL was, was the Mantic Flex pedal. And I would always be like, ask those dudes, like, wait, what does it do? What does it do? And then they give me this really nerdy explanation of it. And I'm like, it basically to me, it's like kind of like the descending laser gun sound. Pew, pew, pew. It's like when you beat the alien at the end of Mega Man 2. That's right, well, like what you will get this like. one then. How about this? There is a sound in here that this does when it goes mew, like he was talking about. That sounds like Peter Frampton comes alive talk box if it went into subharmonic territory. Yeah. So there, you didn't know that one. So OG, Young Buck, explaining the data corruptor. So basically there's, there's, there's three different voices that is contained in this box, right? There's your square wave, which is just your original signal with a gnarly compressed fuzz, which rules. Okay? Square wave fuzz. Keep it. The second voice uh, in this guy up here at the top it's is subharmonic. The subharmonic. So it has a very bit commander quality to it if you could uh, tune the bit commander to different intervals okay so what's fucking crazy about that is you could have you can mix in your original signal with the square wave right and then bring in the subharmonic and have it tuned to be playing like you know basically a chord right. you have two different right. notes going at the same time now uh, there's tons of options for that just look at the all the different numbers over here right you know, there's like fifths there's major third major third there's a minor seven on both sides yes um the third voice is the master oscillator and that's what the entire pedal is built upon so everything else is just fun extras like the square wave and the subharmonic and then the master oscillator is like basically the brain of the pedal of the pll right and so this is this is your mixer up top. This is basically just your, your three independent voices. So if you had all this down, you're not going to hear shit. And you can mix this to be, you know, different flavors. Right. You want a little bit of the square, you want the oscillator blasted, and then just a little subharmonic. Got it. So same with the right side over here. Uh, the master oscillator, you can tune it uh, to different intervals. So on the master oscillator side, there's this root option, right? And this is changing the octave of the interval, okay? Because sometimes if you have this set, let's just say you have your square wave blasted. We're not even gonna talk about the subharmonic. Square wave's blasted and your oscillator is blasted. So if you're, if, you got, if you're playing an A, that's what the square wave is gonna be, right? So then we come over to the oscillator and then let's set the oscillator, the master oscillator to option four Option four happens to be one of my favorites, which is a fifth interval that's one octave up. Right. So that's gonna be uh, an E, a high E, right? Okay, so right now it's set to be one octave up and a high E. Well, the thing about the PLLs and like all this stuff is they track weird, okay? Right. So mostly if you're playing guitar, you're gonna wanna be on the neck pickup for this to make any sense. By the way, it, it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense because it's a fucking insane pedal. It's like, it rivals all the other like Earthquaker weird stuff, Rainbow Machine, Bit Commander. Getting back to the Master Oscillator. So the way this root button works is there's unison, uh, an octave down and two octaves down. So the tracking is crucial on this because you're gonna find when you're playing in different places, there's sweet spots, okay? You might be playing like a low A and it's just like not working and it's kind of glitching out, which could be cool. 
Or if you move it up a higher, you know, up and around the 12th fret A, it's going to like be nice and smooth, okay? So when you have your oscillator tuned to setting three, my favorite setting on this, which is an octave up, one range octave up set to a fifth interval. Right. When you have that at unison, that might sound wonky and you might be like, I'm not hearing what's happening there. So then you would drop it, the root of the master oscillator down an octave. Right. And if that still sounds wonky, you drop it down another octave. So you just have options to get the sounds that you want and have this tune and track correctly because it's a wild pedal. That's the thing. Like uh, by design, it tracks insane shit and it like doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So you dial it all in to make sense. And that's what that's what this is. So you're basically moving around the octaves to be able to find out what tracks the best. Correct. So that makes you play differently. It also makes you want to tune this differently. And as you'll see in our examples, sometimes I'll be up on the D string on the on the octave D and it'll sound great. And then I'll go down to the low D and it won't track. So then I mess with the, the octave down and then I'll try a different er interval here and then it'll track better. It's all about finding the sweet spots, which is what they said to us in the directions. It's neck like, pickup. Neck pickup. Neck pickup on the guitar will be the sweet spot for sure. Now, let me just input a little bit of the bass world. Now, yes, for lower frequencies, as we all know, a lot of octave pedals don't track as well on bass as they do guitar because we're in the lower register range. So what I found is that upper, of course, is then we get up into the octaves that the guitar player sits in and that tracks really well, but that doesn't mean we can't play the lower notes. What I found is that it's how you attack the string. So if you're playing hard and you maybe roll off some of your tone, that eliminates a lot of the overtones that, that confuse the tracking. So then, then actually it starts getting cleaner. So there's a lot, like one of my examples I'll show you, I actually do hit the low E and it tracks perfectly, but I have to play extremely soft on the right hand. And then when I come into the fretted note, I have to hit a little bit harder. That's the kind of dynamic that this pedal has. And you get used to it. It's, it's just a little bit of a learning curve. You don't do the this shit where you just buy it and then you're like, I'm gonna play fast. I'm gonna play some speed metal shit or like, you play to the pedal, okay? Yes. You get this and it inspires you to play differently and like try different things that work with the pedal itself. The way I look at this too, is I look at this as this is me being able to plug into a synthesizer and then I'm writing synth licks I'm, or synth bass lines. So I'm playing stuff and I learn how to play it and then I record with it and then I can do it live. But if I start improvising, that's a whole new world because then you're playing notes that you haven't normally played and then it's going to try to figure it out. And so it's, it's it, what you really, the way I find out that it works great for bass is I start figuring out what I'm going to play ahead of time and then I lock that in and then I play it and loop it. So that is how I approach the data corruptor. It has a lot of um, similar tonal characteristics to like a Micromogue or the Radio Shack version, the Concert Mate, the the, that. the realistic Concert Mate, especially with the different voices. So if you've ever messed with one of those before, you'll hear that. And then especially with um, when you're in the glide mode, which by the way, we haven't talked, we haven't talked about the actual frequency modulator yet. Right. We'll get there. Um, but when you're in the glide mode and you can have those kind of descending laser sounds, it has the vibe of a pitch wheel on like the old micromogs and stuff. Right. So uh, to get, now the special thing about the data corruptor is you can adjust the rate of the laser beam Whatever the nerds actually refer to that as, I don't know, but you can make it so it's basically like there's no laser beam or there's a really long laser beam. So it's either boop or it's boop, and it's just a longer time to get from point A to point B. And so, you know, when you have the rate set to zero, that's it's taking a really, really long time. And actually, when you have it cranked, there's almost no... Uh, quick man laser sound in there. It's just the right. note tracking itself. Then you can pop out of glide mode into vibrato. Vibrato mode is basically gonna sound like a fucking wild theremin. And also, th this frequency modulator is only uh, related to the master oscillator, okay? Unless you change your subharmonic to from oscillator. unison to the oscillator. Then you're gonna get wild shit, which we'll show you all that too. So, I mean, it sounds like it's a really complicated pedal, but once you sit with this thing for 15 minutes, you're like, okay, I get it. And you then the, the complicated part is really just 
coming up with fun riffs that make sense, you know, with this pedal. Right. It's a. I mean, it, it's kind of like a pitch transposer synth pedal. And the, the synthesizer that I think it sounds like, especially with bass, is those, the little uh, uh, Moog synthesizer that they made that Van Halen would play. I'm sorry, it wasn't Moog made, Electro Harmonics made. That little mini Electro Harmonics synth that it has like flat keys. That sound is in this pedal that I can get. It has that bow, bow, bow. I think it's Walk in the Park Van Halen. And it, this gets that because of the envelopes that you get in this, in this pedal. So let's just get to demoing the pedal. So how I'm making that work is I'm playing actually softer on my right hand. When I hit it hard, it starts tweaking it. So if you look at what I got lined up here on the data corruptor is I got the subharmonic cranked. Imagine that, me, subharmonic crank. Then I got the oscillator kicked up a little. Um, I'm here in the unison over on the master oscillator, just going unison. And then over here, I have the fifth down on the subharmonic. And so here we go. Uh, right now, I'm gonna play straight without the square wave coming in and then I'm gonna use my voice mixer and bring in the square. I mean, I think that sounds bass synth. So when I play harder, it says tweaking, but I got to play soft. And then I get, we'll hit even the low D here. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to bring in the square. I'm gonna kick into a different, yo, there we go. I wanna get onto the unison two octaves up. All right. Really okay, here we go. Now you guys are really hearing the upper and you're hearing that that talk box effect that I was talking about earlier. Here we go. I'm gonna switch pickups just to see to prove to you that it does sound different when you flip them. it back, I bet that sounds better on the front pickup. The other thing I was saying about this unit is reminds me a little bit of the Electro Harmonics little mini synth, that little black keyboard less one. And the sounds that I always loved that Van Halen got and like everybody got it you think that gets is kind of similar to this. So here, check it out.
This is the setting that I found works well going all the way down as well into the lower octave and upper octave. So I'm gonna start up here and head on down. So, all right, we got the square wave. Now let's bring the subharmonic set at just the first setting, which is in unison uh, with just the lower octave, okay? So it tracks really, really well in the subharmonic. Uh, then I'm going to bring in the master oscillator, and I believe I will set it to setting three, which is a fifth. I'm going to put it in unison. I'm going to fucking crank it. Let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> So, all right, but now I want to hear that that fifth a little more because all I'm hearing right now is like a ee on the top of it. So now let's drop this uh, fifth interval down, down uh, an octave, right? Still, now watch, I'm gonna That's drop it one, heavy, it is, but I'm gonna drop it one more time. Let's see what that does. So now to demonstrate this uh, major third setting, right? We're set to setting five, which is two octave, a major third, two octaves up. And actually, I have this set to be two octaves down, so it should just kind of like uh, compensate for that and be right in the same zone. Um, subharmonics all the way down, so we should be able to really hear the major third sound here. <laughs> Here how it takes a second to actually kind of like lock in lock into that that actual interval. So in. then right. So now let's let's back the raid off. So that's kind of, you know, how you can tune Fucking all these guys. Rad. Let's get out of glide mode and go into vibrato, AKA theremin mode. So, theremin. okay, we're gonna go down. We'll go reset to unison. We're going to, the master oscillator is set to just the same note, unison, right? So now we should be getting a theremin sound that is basically, you know, the same note as what, I'm, what we're giving it. <laughs> So you want to hear just what the theremin uh, vibrato sound is? Let's take out the square wave so we're only hearing the master oscillator. So that's the theremin with the right dime, but when you kind of back off of it, you can hear that it's sort of just that kind of like wo wobbly vibe sound. 
Okay, so now let's um, send the subharmonic into the oscillator. So we'll set this at just one and then come down here and let's just kind of start off gently, see what this does. You ever had just like the screen fall off your iPhone? Never. Or the button just falls out and basically Never. all the data is just getting corrupted? That's what that oh. sounds like. It sounds just like destroying your iPhone that contains your just whole life and you have it all set to the iCloud and then all of a sudden it's just like being erased. That's pretty much the sound. <laughs> I'm going to add some square wave into it. So as you can see on, on the oscillator, I am actually unison and I'm on two octaves up. And then on the subharmonic, I'm actually cruising in with the oscillator. And, and I am at two, uh, two octaves down. So I'm on the three, so I have two octaves down in unison. So I got my settings at subharmonic oscillator there. And now I'm going to kick the square wave in. Let's get a little bit more gnarly. Buy string dudes can now buy a subharmonic pedal that'll track their B string. <laughs>
Justin Pearson here to fuck with the data corrupter. And I think this is a pedal that's right up your alley. It is. sure if this setting is like what they had in mind but it just has like that that sort of like just full-on fucking grit you know there's no um, for like playing a lower registry too like on bass so like Let me get that. Let me get that so they can all screenshot it. Your setting. <laughs> if you're not competing with like a full band, you know you you're, you can have all kinds of shit happening there. Uh, so you're saying like a drum and bass duo. <laughs> uh, you know, like a lightning bolt. Yeah, of course, maybe right, it would, right. It would be easy. Or, or like, um, you know, if, if if you have like, you know, like with, with the locust, like someone else would sing on a on a part, like you know, maybe the guitar player could drop out, and then it'd just you know be bass and right synth or whatever and, and drums, and so there wouldn't be a lot of like uh, competing elements, I guess. And I think all of our uh, respective you know instruments that we played, like we we were influenced from other elements, not just that one right. instrument. Right, right. Um, you know, and so like something like this or whatever pedal that you choose, like gives you the ability to not be just that instrument, you know? Totally. Um, I, I, Cause I, again, like even like with the Schumann PLL, you know, it was, it was marketed towards guitar and, 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 it, and it worked great for, for me on bass, you know? You're definitely one of the musicians that I've come across that doesn't approach it. You're like, the, the bass is what's in your hands, but you go all over the spectrum. You're, you know, you fill a, percussive role you'll fill a synth role you'll fill like a heavy maybe low-end guitar role or something you know like and 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 to me like when kids ask me like about pedals and they go whoa how would that work for bass it's like well if you're just in a like a r&b band like i don't know mm -hmm. but like when you're you know in bands that do really you know where they stretch shit like you guys did then you're gonna this becomes part of your instrument sure. this is mm -hmm. you know something like this is part of the instrument you know and the crazy thing about this too is like uh, this isn't running through anything else you know it's not run like yeah right i would run through a distortion as well or or whatever else you know just to kind of treat it a little bit make it a little bit nastier this is just full-on like nasty by itself which is great you know i mean uh i think this would probably have a bit more clarity than than if i was to run uh you know the, the schumann through right a, a distortion and, and, and a, you know and a bass synth pedal or something
fucking composition i'd buy that that was fucking awesome <laughs> so you were rocking this shit through this and then you were flipping through the different intervals and it was just and you were playing your melody on it but it was just flipping it into this composition it was again, rad here, joey's here by the way it's here so here again is the basic sound you know i just something really what? vanilla right yes a little bit of tremolo to like embellish some vanilla ass sound and then fuck you were writing something right there yeah you're definitely playing the pedal you know um i don't uh i you know i'm trying to keep it pretty simple yeah just to explore the sounds that this thing can really sort of and you're feeling it out yeah it sounds great sounds and you really cool. and you'd use it i'd use it yeah hell yeah you would use it <laughs> 